Hello, and welcome again to our study of the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Tonight we'll be making an effort to finish up the book. Uh, we are in chapter 5 verses 23, and prayerfully we'll be able to move through verse number 28. Uh, will you join me in the word of prayer? Heavenly Father, thank you for this day that you've given us and for this time to study your word. We pray that we can understand a little better just what it takes to have peace with you and uh, to live in harmony with one another. We thank you for the great lessons of your word and we just ask that you will just bless us to understand yet even more. In your son Jesus' name we pray, amen. Just a really quick commentary. This, um, these few verses um, were extremely packed with information um, the such that there's no way we can cover it all in this particular short period of time. Um, so um, I'll be not attempting to cover everything that I found, um, but certainly just to try and help us to understand a little better about what God would have us to do and be as his uh, people. We're talking about Christian conduct, um, and we've been talking about this now uh, for the last few weeks, but I thought we uh, began this discussion and some things came up about the way we treat each other, our leaders, um, and um, even how we treat the Holy Spirit um, and what the outcome of all of that is. We've been looking at that for Christians, how it ought to lead us to uh, examine everything to make sure the things that we're doing um, are written, are, are, um, are exactly what God wants um, and holding on to those things that are good and shunning those things that are evil. Um, and now uh, we begin another discussion um, that um, involves a subject that I think um, in this day and age, especially given the events that have taken place over the week, um, the, the word peace, um, and um, I'm speaking directly of the events that took place in Washington and how disturbing that was and how much turmoil as an, as a citizen that I that I felt, uh, but then there was the Christian man that 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 found some peace uh, because you understand that God is in control of all things and He um, is watching out for each and every one of His children. Nothing bad is intended for us, um, only peace. So as we look at these passages of Scripture. I just think they're fitting for this time. He says, um, now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely and may your whole spirit, soul and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who is called, he who calls you is, whole, is faithful, who also will do it. Brethren, pray for us. Greet all of the brethren with a holy kiss. I charge you by the Lord that this epistle be read to all of the holy brethren. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. Well, again, Paul opens up this passage of scripture uh, talking about peace. Um, and um, I, I know that, um, again, that there, there's times of turmoil in our lives. Um, such as we're going through now, and even worse, sometimes we go through some personal things that um, that that may leave us a little unsettled. Um, and so, but but God's promising us peace. So what we probably need to do is figure out what it is that God is talking about when He says peace. I think we might find that it's just a little bit different from our idea of peace. Um, God's not promising any one of us sunshine each and every day. Uh, we're going to have to go through some things if we're living any period of time in this life. That's just the way um, God's designed things. But we can have peace regardless of all of that stuff. Um, and so let, let's take a closer look at, uh, first of all, what peace is. 
Peace is a state of national tranquility, exempt from rage and havoc of war. Peace between individuals, i.e. harmony and, and concord. Um, this is what we believe peace to be um, in most cases. And for most, um, for most of the time, we're just kind of looking to get along with our neighbors and, and with our friends and, and, and with people that maybe even we don't necessarily get along with. And when it happens, we, we call that peace. Um, security, safety, prosperity, felicity, uh, because peace and harmony makes and keeps things safe and prosperous. I was just watching a, um, a documentary um, on some things that were going on in Africa during war times. Um, and uh, I, it, it, it hurt my heart to hear some of these things. Um, and uh, because there's no peace, I mean, there's no security. Uh, children were being ripped away from their parents. Fathers shot dead right there in front of their families. Uh, mothers uh, left uh, all along. They, 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 there's no safety and um, the, 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 the situations um, hunger all over the place. Um, it, it, just, it, it just does not look like a peaceful time uh, when I looked at that uh, particular documentary. And uh, it made me appreciate the fact that um, I do have some security, um, safety, prosperity, and felicity uh, in my life. And God's granted me that. Um, of, mess, uh, of the Messiah's peace, the way that leads to peace um, is salvation. And that comes through Jesus making it known to us um, as he lived on, his, on this earth. Um, of Christians, of Christianity, the tranquil, the tranquil state uh, of the soul, assured of salvation through Christ, and so fearing nothing from God and content with its earthly lot of whatsoever sort that is. And that's, 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 that's really the, the, the definition that we need to dwell on when we're talking about peace with God. God's peace is not based on the things going on outside of the world, and we're gonna see that um, in a short time, but God's peace is something that he offers to his children. It's the blessed state of um, a devout, upright man after death uh, is, um, is the ultimate end um, to peace. We gotta understand that God's peace is conditional. The peace that God offers is conditional. Um, he's not offering peace to, to just anybody. Um, there are certain conditions that must be met if we're gonna have a peaceful relationship with God and if God is gonna have a peaceful relationship um, with us. By the way, just let me comment that um, again, we visit the subject of the loving God versus the angry God. Uh, we gotta know that God is all loving, but there's coming a time when his wrath is going to be revealed and um, it's not gonna be fun for uh, some men, um, especially those who um, don't obey him. We'll be looking a little more into that um, as we move forward into the book of Second Thessalonians. But um, God's peace is conditional. Um, there's, there, there has to be unity among the brethren. Paul uh, in Romans chapter 15 verses 30 through 33 um, actually wanted the brothers to strive together to pray with him against the um, evil forces that were trying to harm them um, in Judea so that the gospel can be uh, spread just a little bit further. Um, and so, um, and, and, and uh, in doing that, Paul lets them know in that 33rd verse that um, they're going to gain the peace of God um, in them working together with the brethren. Um, the doctrine must be correct for God's peace. Um, Romans 16, uh, 17 through 20 um, talks about uh, marking those who are unruly um, among you. Um, and that will keep the peace. 
um, a right mindset. Philippians 4, 8 uh, through 9, a very familiar passage of scripture where Paul talks about letting this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, um, in, in that uh, lesson of humility that uh, took place. Um, is something that is necessary for us to um, gain uh, access to God's peace. And then there's the righteous morals um, that we're going to be looking at or that we have looked at um, so far and will continue to look at in First Thessalonians chapter 5, um, especially verse number 23. So God's uh, peace is conditional. We got to know that um, 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 uh, that 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 it's not um, something that everybody will enjoy. We got to know it's offered to everybody, but not everybody will take advantage. So therefore, um, everybody uh, will not enjoy God's peace. Um, just a little something that um, I, I I really. Over the years, I've, I've seen this um, and, um, and, and have used it. Um, and this seems like a very appropriate time to talk about it in depth just a little bit. Um, know God and you'll know peace. Now, um, when we look at Luke chapter 2 and verse number 14, we'll see that with the coming of Jesus came um, the announcement of peace and goodwill to all of mankind. So when Jesus came, peace and goodwill came to the earth with him. Um, uh, the, the book of John, uh, chapter 14, uh, in verse number 27, uh, we see that Jesus said, I'm, I'm leaving you peace. And it's not like the world's peace. It's, it's a little different from the uh, peace that the world uh, will give you. Um, and so um, in that, we see Jesus himself uh, leaving us peace. And then again, in John 16, uh, 33, um, we see that, um, that um, as Jesus was talking to the, uh, the, the disciples, the apostles, um, we see him there um, telling them that he's speaking to them because they're going to go through a whole bunch of stuff. Um, but um, they, they can be a good cheer um, because they're going to have uh, peace. And this, and this um, kind of um, a different look um, that we can see because we know of the turmoil that the apostles had to face, uh, but Jesus promised them peace. So if we know God, we know peace. But here's the other side of that. No God, no peace. You see, God is the key to peace. If we don't know God, then there's no way possible that we can enjoy any kind of enduring peace. Yeah, we may get these temporary flashes of peace, but uh, it won't be um, anything that will last uh, because it's not really peace. It's just um, something that that, that, that you've come up with in your own imagination that you think will make you happy. You won't know peace until you know God. So if you, and, and um, you know, we, we look and we see Matthew chapter 10 uh, and Luke chapter 12 um, in verse number 51, that Jesus himself declared, and this is after we see peace and goodwill offered to all men and Luke chapter two, we see Jesus himself, the person that this announcement was made uh, um, to honor, um, saying, I came not to bring peace, but the sword. Two times we see him saying it here in Matthew and in Luke. And so we see that God's peace um, in this is conditional. If we know God, we'll know peace. If we don't know God, we will not know peace. Moving on in the passage of scripture, Paul talks about preserving and sanctification. Um, and um, the, um, the, these are um, definitions that um, I came up with uh, from the Strong's. Um, 
and um, to preserve is an interesting word. And, and you know, whenever I see to guard, um, and and it's and it's in my favor, um, it's it 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 it, it sparks an imagery uh, in my mind of just um, soldiers standing watch over something very important. Um, and this is what God does for us when we are uh, um, doing those things that he will have us to do. Um, he'll guard us from loss or injury uh, properly by keeping his eyes upon us. Now, again, uh, property um, is something that, um, that, that we got to take on the spiritual level. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about the body um, and, how, and, and how we um, 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 look at that. Um, but in fact, that's, that's, that's a bit of property. That's God's property. It belongs to God. And so God is guarding it um, from injury. And again, we got to hear the words of Jesus. Don't fear him that can hurt the body, um, but you got to fear him that can hurt both body and soul um, in hell. Uh, and so um, to know that um, God is preserving and sanctifying me um, completely, um, the, the, the word is that, uh, that uh, Paul used. He says completely sanctified um, through, and, and this comes through the truth of God's word, John 17, 17, a passage of scripture that I'm sure we're familiar with, sanctify them by the truth, thy word is truth. Um, this sanctification um, and preservation is for the whole man. Um, and um, it gets a little confusing if you're not careful looking at this passage of scripture because you'll get the idea that God is uh, tearing us apart uh, and, and dealing with different parts, body, soul, spirit. Um, so I just thought I'd just take a little look at, at, at some of the things um, that, uh, that, that are involved with um, body, soul, and spirit. Um, the soul is the seed of the feeling, desires, affections, aberrations, and is basically our hearts. Um, the human soul, the human soul, insofar as it um, constituted uh, that uh, by the by the right uh, use of AIDS offered it by God, um, it can attain its highest end and secure eternal blissness. The soul regarded as a moral being designated for everlasting life. Okay, and so you know we got to know that that our soul has a great deal to do with our destiny. We we got to serve God um, with our minds, uh, and and you know um, I I know we um, oftentimes uh, talk about the heart, and you know we 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 got a clear understanding. But just in case we don't, it's it's not the the the, the pump, um, the the blood pump in your chest. It's, it's, it's the mind that the scripture is talking about. You got to keep your mind right um, in order to understand uh, or in order to uh, understand and be a part of the preservation that God is giving. Um, the soul um, as an essence which differs from the body and is not dissolved by death distinguished from the other parts of the body. And so, you know, the, the, the soul um, is the part that, that's going on. Uh, it's the one that's going to have to either meet its maker or spend its destiny in that undesirable place. Uh, the spirit, um, current or air or breeze, um, by analogy, a figurative, a spirit, a rational soul, okay? So it's the rationale of the soul, um, the virtual principles, mental um, disposition. You know, you, you, your spirit um, will, will help you, um, help your soul um, because it reads God's word. You don't know what to do uh, in certain situations. But the spirit who does not know God's word, um, it's, it's not gonna know. Uh, what to do in particular situations. So the spirit um, really is what will determine um, we, what we do, how our minds uh, think. 
And so it's important that we be filled with the right spirit. Uh, the spirit of God Almighty uh, probably is our best bet. No, not probably, is our best bet. The body, um, and of course we know about the body. Uh, the body um, is, is, is the body um, used in a wide uh, range of uh, applications, uh, literally or figuratively, body, um, the body, bodily, body or slave. Um, you know, our bodies um, are probably what gives us the most trouble of the three. Um, is that the mind can be willing. Um, you can come from a good um, um, place, but sometimes the body gets in the way of that and its evil desires. Um, and so we need to uh, know that, that that's in the way. But you know, Paul gave us a solution for that. He said, put it to death. He said, mortify the, 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 those uh, members. Um, that are that uh, that that are going to give you trouble, and you know when we were baptized into Jesus Christ, we put off this body and we put on Jesus Christ, and so our bodies need to match such. Body, soul, and spirit um, equals the whole man. God is not going to treat the body um, apart from the soul apart from the spirit. He's going to deal with the whole man. It's kind of like um, God saying, I'm going to go right to the core of man, right through everything. I'm going to start at the skin and I'm going to go right down uh, to the very core of man. I'm not going to miss a part. So, and that's, that's basically the way we look at this body, soul, and spirit. I'm not going to leave any part of it untouched. I'm going to deal with the whole man um, each is named as a as uh, each one uh, is named uh, by the Lord as key um, in the greatest commandments you you remember this and you shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart with all of your soul with all of your mind and with all of your strength this is the first commandment so when we do this when we love God like this, um, we, 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 we're going to be careful about the way that we live. We're going to be careful about the places we go. We're going to be careful with the things that we say because we're guided by a different spirit. We're going to be careful about the way we feel about men. We're not going to hate anybody. So we only know love because that's the spirit we have. Um, one of the best things that I can think of, ways that I can think of to put it is in this old uh, childhood song that I'm sure we all um, are familiar with. Oh, be careful, little hands, what you see or, or what you do. Be careful, little hands, what you do. For the Father up above is looking down in love. So be careful, little hands, what you do. Oh, be careful, little feet, where you go. Be careful, little feet, where you go. For the Father up above is looking down in love, so be careful, little feet, where you go. And it goes on to talk about um, eyes and, 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 and mouth. Um, we got to be careful about the things that we say um, because we're of a different spirit. And when we act and say and do things that are outside of the spirit, um, then um, it goes back to um, the earlier uh, part of this the uh, discussion um, about quenching the Holy Spirit. He who calls you is faithful, um, who also will do it. Brethren, pray for us. Um, Paul um, understood that God um, is faithful, and we got to understand that God is faithful. Um, because we're living in a time where um, physically we may not see God's preservation, but we got to know it's there. Each and every day we wake up, God is preserving us. Um, and so we, we got to understand that God's got us completely protected. And um, he promised us, he's faithful. And when God promises us, he'll do it. Paul asks for prayers uh, for the brethren. Um, from the brethren uh, for him um, as he um, carried forth um, the work. 
um, that uh, he was doing. Sharon, um, just one more, one verse that, uh, uh, two verses um, that uh, I, I think we can uh, look at um, concerning sharing, um, how we share um, in our faith and in our, um, our aid to one another. He says, greet all of the brethren with a holy kiss. I charge you by the Lord that this epistle be read to all the holy brethren. Paul's desire is, is that um, the, the church uh, be together, that they be able to touch one another, um, that they be able to encourage one another in, in, in physical ways. Um, the, the, the human touch is, is, is a special thing, and, and we really got to know it. Um, at a time of discouragement, there's nothing like a strong hand on the shoulder uh, from a brother who you care very deeply for and who cares very deeply for you. It's kind of like you can almost feel that uh, um, emotion and energy uh, as he lays his hands on you. Or that, that hug uh, that we receive every Sunday um, or that we normally receive every Sunday. Um, it, it, it really goes a long way for encouraging each other. Um, and, um, and, and so um, there's something to be said about us being able to touch one another, which is again, more reason why we need to come together uh, so that we can salute one another in a proper way. Um, now I know we're dealing with cultural um, things here, but the Bible does say salute one another with a holy kiss. Um, and um, one of the things that I hope will happen in our discussion on Wednesday um, is that we can get a little more clarification um, on what that means uh, in your own minds, um, because the, uh, the, uh, the author of our, um, our lesson, uh, Brother Mark Mayberry, um, seems to think that we stand in danger of letting um, personal um, feelings get into things and it go the wrong way with the personal kit with the uh, with the holy kiss. Um, but um, I maintain that um, when the scripture tell us to do it, um, we can't um, say we can't do it because we have human emotions. Uh, we got to remember we're put to death. Um, and so those emotions and those kinds of feelings ought not to go with a holy kiss. Um, if, if that's a problem for you, um, just, just read God's word and, 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 and ask him to help you to get beyond that um, and understand that God's word is God's word. And we can't um, change it uh, because something's hard to do or because we've got to change things. Um, and so, you know, in that particular uh, part of this particular lesson from this author, um, I'd, I'd be a little hesitant about um, by um, to, to say, um, since people can't control themselves, let's limit it to a handshake. Um, we got to do better than that. We, we, we got to be filled with the spirit of God and be able to handle these human touches as what they're meant for encouragement so that we can go on and do those things that God will want us to do. Then there was the church-wide community. Paul wanted um, all of this stuff to be read to everybody. He wanted everybody to have access to uh, the good news and uh, the, 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 the teachings um, that were going to help them um, to, um, to be what God wants them to be so that in that day, they too uh, can, can enjoy uh, preserva preservation. So Paul goes on and he ends this book. Um, and um, it, 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 it's a great book to study. Um, I'd recommend that you go deep uh, into depth on um, this book um, and really grab as much as you can. There is so much um, there. For your homework, uh, groups two and three, uh, please answer question 13. And um, groups one and four, gonna ask you to answer question 14. 
and both groups, please answer question 15. And I would just like for you to note uh, Mark Mayberry's comments on page 40 uh, of our workbook uh, as you prepare your answer for that uh, particular question. It's been a fun study um, and um, um, prayerfully we'll see you Wednesday on next week. Um, we'll be uh, beginning uh, the uh, introduction into the books of the book of uh, Second Thessalonians. Will you pray with me? Heavenly Father, thank you again for this uh, time, and I pray that uh, your word can help us to uh, live more in your spirit um, and have our spirit to uh, be more uh, in line with you. We just ask, Father, that you will just help us to live all of these things that we've read about and studied through this book of First Thessalonians um, and just help us um, that in that day, we can be among those who are preserved completely. We thank you for watching out for us, and we just ask that you would continue to bless us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.